we was out here one night and um I don't know, I don't even know who did it, but somebody wrote for sure on the wall. That's what that said. I got that ministry in my heart. That four is me, you know what I'm saying? I rep the brotherhood really by myself. I call all my brothers my foes. Not FOEs, FOURs. You know what I'm saying? For ordained unto revelation. You feel me? What else does it say? For sure or what? Who boy? I don't know what that means, but boy. yeah. I mean, God, I don't know who was tweaking and wrote that, but <laughs> and what we're doing is preparing the kingdom in the last days to be the first fruits of the kingdom. Repping it for life. This thug life. Truly humble under God. We thugging. You know what I'm saying? Today, there are many in America without a home. Victims of a sudden personal challenge, rising housing costs, the recent lockdowns, or escaping a dangerous domestic situation and seeking housing elsewhere. And then there are those who seem to persist with the life on the street, who have come to even embrace it. Get a job, get all fresh and bored. I'm bored, I'm in the house, I'm like, ah. My ancestors lived in two I'm at home. They're just as deserving of help, and by some measures, are even more in need than those working to help themselves out of this life. In the meantime, they contribute to what has now become a lifestyle and a culture stepping out of the pace and responsibilities of mainstream American life. This series shares the stories and origins of several such individuals, following them as they navigate life in the streets, as they reflect upon their direction and influences, and when made possible, working with the individuals to help them up. These are the individuals who are homeless. I'm not homeless, I'm homeless. So is this big enough to power the whole? Well, I got eight tenths on this right now. If everybody just does what they're supposed to and just runs, you know, lights and phone chargers, I could probably do three quarters of a camp, but they can't do that. They gotta be adding on all kinds of other shit. Space heaters are 1500 watts by themselves. Yeah. Where do you get the money for the fuel? Uh, the guy across the street, Jim, the old guy, he's, um, the guy just went and did a propane run and he always fills all the gas cans up when I do that. So for the most part, the gas is free. It wasn't like that. A month ago, we had to pay for it out of our own pocket, and people have jobs and GA, and I mean, they have the hustle that gets some cash, but it's been free for the last month, so that's good. Blessing. Blessing, yeah, blessing. Blessing. I've been here, I don't know, probably five months or so. I usually think it's a lifelong path, but it was a, just a handful of bad choices um, in a matter of days that got me to where I'm at now. You know, I was an addict, an alcoholic for 12 years, and, and then I kind of dabbled in, uh, in the drugs, and then I got into some trouble, and that's kind of where it landed me here, you know. I had a cushy job that I had for about 10 years. Construction, I was a pipe layer. So I, I was making, 60 grand a year and I had a house and kids and stuff and within a matter of just hours it all got taken away. I had nowhere to go so then I ended up staying here and that turned into where I'm at now. My immediate family, I don't talk to any of them, I haven't had it in years. Um, I think my dad knows I'm here and that's probably it unless they read the newspaper or see me in the pictures or something. Because the news has come here a few times. Yep, they come here a few times. There's been a lot of a lot of drama here. A recent fire over here. This is the third fire since I've been here. So I was here about a month and nobody even knew that I existed, which is kind of what I wanted. And then after a while, I started seeing that things had to be done and nobody was doing it. So that turned into me being the, the guy, the go-to guy for everything, I guess. So 
it'll be one, two o'clock in the morning, and I'll get a knock on my tent, you know, Andy, I'm out of propane, you know, so either I have to get them a tank or I have to fill them up a tank, you know, otherwise they freeze, which I don't want, so. Uh, I did a propane run, which is typically every three days. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'd go with Jim to do that. You know, the first reaction was, what the heck are they doing? Why are people moving into tents in that space? Because it's been a vacant lot for years. I walked across the street and just said hello. Were you in, were you nervous or intimidated to oh, come? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you understand that. These people don't have a place. Uh -huh. They don't have any place to go that's safe. And that's the biggest thing they need. It's very sad. It's embarrassing. You know, it's, it's not Minnesota. But at the least, they deserve a place where they are unmolested. Where they can uh, know what's going to happen tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. So that's where we are now. Now we're just buying propane. Okay. This little piece of land is would make a perfect place for people to camp for a while. It doesn't have to be permanent, but just leave them alone for a year or two. What do people normally do to pass the time? Are they normally working on their situation, like their tent and so forth? Uh, tent's kind of a full-time job. As you can... yeah. King, King here is kind of an example of <laughs> a full-time position working on your tent. But... Uh, yeah, okay. Tents aren't supposed to be, they're not made to live in 24-7, so obviously you got to do a lot of adjusting. I see a lot of reinforcing. Yeah, like with a, wooden a lot of ingenuity. And... Basically, I'm just restructuring um, the fort. You know, um, living, living in the fort, it takes a lot of maintenance. You know, you got, you got snowfall, heavy snowfall, you got wind. Yeah. I'm building a foundation so we can keep us off the ground so we won't be cold. And were you in construction? Yeah, I, I did home improvement. Yeah, tile work, grout, drywall, stucco. It comes with its perks, you know. It's, I love doing it, you know what I'm saying? Blessings do come, you know what I'm saying? Um, we get donations, a lot of donations come through. This right here is going to be a two to three tent canopy. This is all my own material. Yeah, where do you get the lumber? Donations, bro. We take care of the people, people take care of us, and we just living, maintaining, you know? This is one of the better ones because they've been here for a while and they can stay here. But a lot of times what happens is they get moved and we can't keep in contact with them. Here's so the care packages. And, and it's just out. some socks, some uh, toothbrushes, socks, some toothbrush, things. Toothpastes. We, we pass out condoms, tampons. Narcan. We Narcan. Uh, test uh, strips where you can test your drug to see if it's got fentanyl on it. Uh, in the last two months, we've lost five young african-american people between the ages of 16 to 24. these pills that they're buying on the streets that are laced with fentanyl to the point where people are asking you got fetty you got fetty not understanding how dangerous fentanyl is because they want it or they want to avoid it they because they want it they want it now you know because they think oh i didn't did it before i didn't over d think we don't really focus on the drugs we focus on the on the, on the health you know what i mean we, we focus on people not yeah. the drugs my goal is to try to help everybody get housing, one way or another. And it's, it's not an easy thing. A lot of times they don't want to go through the paperwork. And you have to realize when you get out of treatment, you still have the same barriers yeah. that you had before you went in treatment. Is there a child here? Sometimes. Yeah. Hey, King, is there is there a baby here? You know, I'm a, I'm a drifter, so you know what I'm saying. I'm 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 not homeless. I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying. So I just like I like being outside. You know, I was. In, in Florida, outside. Are you from the area? I was born yep, here on the north side of Minneapolis, but I was raised by way of East St. Louis in Florida. I've been on the streets in all three, all three places, yeah. You ever came across people, King? I have that just simply 
get housing, but they can't mentally be there because they've been outside for so long. You know That's me. Saying? That's yeah. me. My name's Robert. Born and raised in Rosebud, South Dakota Reservation, but placed in a foster home at a young age before I ever knew I was who I was. I ran away and started causing trouble. That's the only way I could get away from foster home. So I just started causing myself trouble, moving on from different different group homes to different detention centers and group homes. Then they thought I was crazy because I had so much anger in me. All right, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, that we can come out and serve your people. Father, we ask you this to be a blessing upon them, Father. Continue to take good care of them, watch over and keep them warm, Father, and just pour your love in them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. See, I lived outside, I lived alongside the river, alongside the railroad track, and I tried to use the shelters, but the shelters are even worse than this place. I've been in and out of prison half my life. Because I was always getting into fights and getting in trouble, so you know, like, you're a really troublemaker, lock you up, put you somewhere for a couple well, years. Uh, this time, I've been like a couple years now. Have you been on the street this whole time? Yeah. Did you ever have a situation in life where you had a place of your own, you had work, and things were kind of on a, things were working out pretty, things were working out okay? I had a place, but I never had a job at the same time. If they give you an apartment, what would you do? Yeah, here still. You will put it in your head. You gotta change your life. You gotta do something better. You gotta do it. Then I let them boost my head up. Then I go get a job. Be, go out fresh and I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm in the house. I'm like, ugh. I'm not a video gamer. I'm not. I'm not gonna like the internet. I don't have a phone. I want something to do out here. I've yeah, never, you know never had saying? a day where I could just sit down and do nothing. Yeah. I like working with my hands. I like. I got the gift to gab. You know what I'm saying? I like. I like to be with the people. You know what I'm saying? I love outside. Yeah. Walls don't talk. <laughs> I'm a freestyle living, bro. I live off the land. God does provide. My higher power got me. You know what I'm saying? And one thing I know. I create my destiny, I create my future, and I create my success. My success is whatever I'm good at. We were at another place where we went to go feed the community, Hello? and then we found out that they tore that one down, and so they moved out here, and so we just followed them. So wherever they go, we want to be a blessing to them. Amen. Plenty of people that want to help. Well, every day somebody at least stops and gives donations. It's good and bad. Good because people care and they want to help, but bad because that might enable some people who are homeless to continue to be homeless because everything is brought to you and handed to you. What's the point of wanting to move on to bigger and better things, you know? Everybody, everybody ain't right. Okay, hey, okay. but God will make well, them right. Amen. He gives us the heart for it. Amen. I'm good. Okay. That's how we get it. You're all set for a while. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how we get it, man. We got firewood, that wood, that wood right there burns for about three hours, bro. Hey, what y'all got? Some more people, you seen them right? These are these are other people, this a whole different, this a whole different group of people with food. Hey, what kind of food y'all got? Dirty rice, let me get some. Hey, y'all right here. We are four right here. Did you want some? Yes, ma'am. I love Minneapolis. This is my birth city. You know what I'm saying? The people are beautiful. They do care for their people, man. I ain't never heard of a uh, 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 homeless medical van riding around for the homeless people, giving them their meds. That's crazy. I love it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, Clean needles. What? Mm -hmm. Man, you want to be a junkie and you want to be on the street, come to Minneapolis, baby, because you ain't going to have a dirty needle in your pocket at all. In Florida, we have to go to the, to the uh, uh, you have to go to the, uh, the pharmacy, pay for it, and have an ID. Where do you get any money? If, just to buy basics or, or to support, or, or to get alcohol or drugs or, I don't know, food or whatever. I mean, it's many hustles, you know? Um, Cross happening when they break into people's cars, uh, they go boosting, thrift uh, stores, they uh, mm -hmm. do all type of shit. Yeah. Steal cars, I don't, I'm not into that. Me, I, I personally, I got the gift of God, like I told you. I can make a sign, 
with a statement on it, right. saying God bless MPLS and get it. You know what I'm saying? What about like the luxuries of life? You know, people drive by in a car, they have possessions. Do you ever think, hmm, it'd be nice to have some of that stuff? Nah. Damn, they, they ain't never really live. They're caught in the system, dog. The monetary system got this shit fucked, excuse me, got this thing messed up, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not MK Archer program. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a part of this slave system. You know what I'm saying? I hear that money, this modern day slavery that they got. I don't do institutions right. at all. Yeah. Not no college institution, prison institution, mm -hmm. shelter institution. I don't do none of that. I feel like I'm rich, you know? Yeah, I don't want what they got. I used to be in a situation like this, and I was like, I've made friends, and just because my friends live in tents, I'm not going to come say hi. <laughs> you said you were homeless. At yeah, a few years back, yeah. I went through a really messy divorce, and it put me out on the street, and I just continued doing my school stuff and did what I could. So you were a student while you were homeless? Yeah, yep. And when you, when you yep. say homeless, you mean you were like I, I, mean, I wasn't even homeless? staying in a camp. I was staying over East St. Paul, like behind a crop of like recycling bins. You graduated while you were still living yep, outside? I, I, yep. And then you went and applied for jobs? And... Well, I was a mechanic, and I always supported myself. I would like stay alive was I would carry, and I didn't carry clothes and stuff. I carried just like basic tools and stuff in my bag. And in the middle of winter, someone needs to jump their car that died at the gas station. They'll throw you $10 for it. And that's, you know. What got you out of your tent and into a place to live? I actually met uh, a friend that was staying at a house over South Minneapolis and didn't have to do like a background check, which is a big barrier for a lot of people. They said that it as they were like, as long as you could pay your three, four hundred dollars, whatever it was a month, you could rent the bedroom. So you saved up enough money to pay your first month's rent. Yep. And then you had a place yep. and then you were able to apply for work. Yes. Because then I had, I mean, I had that home base. I had a place to go at, you know. You live now? Brooklyn Center. And do you rent that room up there too? No. Whole house. <laughs> so you got out. Mm -hmm. You got out of the life. I did. I mean, I still obviously have that permanent like attachment to it, but like I said, there's people out here. I'm someone who, in situations like I, I have a friend that can also, I mean, I can come in and I can bring out, you know, hand warmers or my people who just hang out, like, because they're my friends. I don't know. I just personally, I was like, I'm not having that. <laughs> Were you also more capable of, of of escaping this lifestyle because you steered clear of, of a lot of the, the hard drug use? Nope. Nope, being honest, I mean, I did just, just as much as everybody else. Wow. But, I mean, I don't know what it is that makes some people able to be functional and some of that, some not. Are you worried about coming back to a place like this because you might, I don't know, be tempted to stay here? Or, or no. No, 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 no. You kind of find yourself back here? No, I mean, some, I've been out here and I'll be like, okay, it's time for me to go home. I've been out here for like, you know, the better part of a week. Time to go home. It was just what I did with my summer when I did my kids. You're a really strong, independent person. I guess. I have to do it. Like, you just what you have to do or else, you know, you end up, you know, here for whatever reason. Yeah. But if you end up here, then get out, <laughs> you know? Either you, you get out or you don't. What we want ultimately is one thing, is a place that we can just be left alone and just live. You're always going to get uprooted and, and, and moved. I don't know any tent area, tent city, tent gathering that was not uprooted and, and moved. I, I, so people are aware that this is temporary. Yeah, ab that, absolutely that temporary. The bulldozer will come. They'll come with their fancy book clip, clipboards and they'll help you pack your stuff up and move. and. There might be a handful that you know go to a shelter if they choose. Otherwise, really, you just get up and you find somewhere else to go. Whether it's all together or you're scattered out, and then it'll happen again. It's five, six months. It's over and over and over again. We're tired, man. You know what I'm saying? Why they can't give a place for us to be, to get the help, to have the resources to, if we do want to get the help, mm -hmm. or a place that's to be safe with the Narcan there. You know what I'm saying? Well, if you went in alleys dying or, or in your backyard defecating and, and, and peeing all in your wall and stuff like that, set the porta potty up, set the fence up, and set the tents up and have it secured, you know what I'm saying, by good people, you so know what I'm saying? It's a dedicated place for people who want to live outside. Yeah, you can say that, or people who are drifting, or people who are struggling, all in one. Oh man, look, I love this. This is how we living right here. Real life Fortnite, you hear me? 
Like, for real. I don't know where that came from. A lot of people that come here get things from the encampment that they don't get elsewhere. Whether it's a lot or a little, there's two or three people that I will consider my lifelong brothers for the rest of my life. I had never gotten that other than when I came here. So it's, it's weird that you find homeless camps. But you don't really have a choice to be your family because all you have is each other. Where I'm at now, I actually have a whole apartment that I could go to, um, which is kind of crazy to, to say, but I am not. I can't leave until things are figured out right now with the camp and where they're going to end up and all that stuff. I just... You could leave, of course. I could. Well, yeah, no one's holding me hostage here, but as far as like my mental state when I'm gone, I'm just going to be thinking about this place and whether everybody's staying warm or not. So some people call it crazy. Um, I guess it kind of is, but... Thank you.